Any questions before we move on to 24? And I'll come back to 22, 23. Okay, let's go all the way to page... What page is it, guys? Page 14, yep. So there's only three pages at the end there. Here we go. A family currently pays $600 rent per week, assuming a constant inflation rate. Now, when I skimmed through as a class, we did this really well. So thumbs up. Um, again, you're pretty much... And the, the formula sheet tells you this, right? Uh, sorry, the yeah formula and data sheet. You've got this form. You can pretty much just use, right? It was pretty hard to get it wrong if you had that form and then you went to your calculator, okay? But people who got that wrong, maybe they didn't know how to use that form or they were solving something else like writing 600 equals like P times one point. So they were solving for something else and students got a bit confused in that way, okay? Uh, a principal of $10,000 to be invested for three years, determine which of the following is the best investment option. And when I was looking at this paper myself, I sort of went, yes, because we've done like the, almost this exact question, just with slightly different numbers. So you can see um, there's a couple of different ways to go through this. Uh, here's method one, here's method two, but clearly you have to make the comparison. You gotta try A, try B, and then you absolutely, absolutely needed to have a conclusion, okay? Um, I was really sad at how many people, not just in our class, um, who looked at this and they did all the calculations they needed, but they didn't actually answer the question. They just sort of put numbers there and hoped that they spoke for themselves rather than actually determining which one was which, okay? All right, uh, next page. Uh... Mr. Faircloth bought a lot of shares. Uh, you can see there, the 1,000 shares times $9.80, that's the total value. That dividend yield, right, the 4%, that applies to that entire value, right? You didn't have to do it in that order. You could say 4% of $9.80 and multiply by 1,000, you're gonna get the same thing. But again, the better responses they said, okay, like what are these two things? And they calculated them separately rather than just kind of mashing numbers together and hoping that everything was okay. All right? Yes. Okay, so the dividend is about how much... So, okay, um, I own all of these shares in the company and if I sell all of them, like I buy them at a certain point of time and they increase in value and then I sell all of them and hopefully, you know, I've, I've made a bit of a, a profit, Okay. But if I hold on to those shares, the government, not government, the company wants to reward me for being a faithful investor. So they're paying out like every year or every quarter or what it is, um, this dividend, which is some, some proportion of that. So in this case, it was 4% because maybe the company did pretty well that year. 4% a lot. Okay. So, question. Uh, so I have all of that work. It's a two-mark question. Yep. I have all of that working. But I accidentally put another line of working. Same. Because I put like... I what put did the, you put? I put the 9,800 um, plus the 392 oh, yeah, that's what as I my too. final line of yeah, working. Same. And you got like, what is that? A 10,000 something? Yeah, 10192. Yeah. But I put an X there. And I did, so so you it, got one I mean, hold on. Oh, is it right? I see what you mean. So as in your paper looks like, kind of like this? Like yes. that. Okay, yep, sure. Okay. So this is a good question. Um, and this sort of... Hopefully, like even if this was not the particular error that you made, this will this kind of thing happens quite a lot. Okay, so what this is about, and sometimes, by the way, I will also point out, not on this question but on others, you might see this acronym. Okay, um, there are lots of acronyms you've seen CFM before, which is like you make an error early on and you carry it forward through your error, through your working. This stands for ignore subsequent error. Okay, so what this might mean is, okay, I do some, like an algebra, okay, I simplify down, I simplify down, and then I get to the answer, and then I do something extra, which happens to be wrong, okay, but depending on what you've done in the question, it's like, oh, all that earlier stuff, that's what we were looking for, so therefore we're just going to quietly ignore that and pretend you never wrote it, okay, so sometimes this happened and there's no penalty, but in this case, now, and I'm going to answer why, in this case, it didn't happen. Actually adding more information, it did mean like, okay, we weren't gonna pay you the mark. We had one out of two? One out yeah. of two, is that what you got? Okay. Now here's why, right? Again, we're trying to do our best to read your mind through your writing. Yeah, that's all we can do. And in the HSC, you never even get to have this conversation. You just get a number at the end and that's the end of the that's the end of the story. Okay. So we're trying to judge what do you understand and what do you not understand by what you've written. 
Okay? Now, what I'm about to say may or may not be true, but it's the best indication we have as we look at your working. When I look at a student who's done this, okay, what I surmise, what I conclude, is that by writing this, the student doesn't actually know what the dividend that gets paid is, right? Like the dividend that gets paid is the whole point is that the person doesn't sell off all their shares. They still hold on to them and then they get given this sort of small part, okay? So to write this down kind of indicates whether I do or not, and we just made it as an honest accident, that I don't understand that the dividend only represents the 4% and that's what we were assessing. That's what we were looking for. I could put down a whole bunch of things that are right, but if I put this down, it demonstrates I don't, it indicates, it exhibits that I don't understand the difference between those, okay? If you want to take it to the logical extreme, suppose um, suppose I actually didn't know that the, even the, you knew that 392 was an important number. Maybe I didn't know that, right? I could just take um, one, two, three numbers, and I could combine them in every possible way. I could add them all together, I could multiply them, I could add and multiply, and I could write them all down, right? So that this working is somewhere in my working, but there's all this wrong stuff. What does that indicate for you as a marker about me if I put down all of that there? You just trial and error. Yeah, I'm just kind of throwing stuff against the wall and hoping something sticks. I don't really get it. Okay, does that make sense? So that's why we're going through this process and learning, I hope. It's been a long time, but we need to review this so that when we move forward, it's, it forms a good foundation. Okay? Okay, so I'm sorry that took a little more time than I, I intended. Uh, we're almost finished, so part two. One year after purchasing them, then he sells. Then he sells, right? He sells the shares for that amount. What's his total profit if he's charged this brokerage? And then you can see the rule for brokerage. Yep. There was a huge range in, when I talk to people afterwards, like how much time do you have left? Some people had heaps of time and some people were madly writing to the, the dying seconds, okay? I would probably suggest being able to do it quickly, and the people in the room, I spoke to some of you, who were able to do it quickly, generally as you're going through, there are two things you're doing. Number one, you're recognizing things quite quickly. You're like, oh, I know this question, and then you launch straight into, like it's the difference between, like when I wrote essays in English, I didn't, I memorized no essays, right? I know a lot of people now, like the majority of people maybe even, memorize their essays. So I'd have to get in there, and then I'd, have to, I'd look, read the question, and then I'd think about it, right? Whereas if you've memorized something, you look at it, and you think, okay, how am I gonna massage my thing to fit into to that? And then and then you start writing, okay? Whereas every time I've finished a sentence, I'm like, hmm, now what shall I write now, okay? Now clearly, that's gonna soak up your time, and the same thing happens here. If you look at a question like this, and to be honest, this is a very, very good example, because it's hard, and you're like, brokerage? I've got to read all of this stuff like, and, and try and piece together my response to this because I've never seen this kind of thing before. It's going to take me like two or three times longer to do a question like that. So that's the first thing. The second thing as well, like if you got to any parts of the exam and you're like, I didn't even get to attempt these, then really you should go through an exam and from now on, by the way, all your exams in the MPC will include reading time. Okay, they don't always in the AP ones, but from now on they will. You want to look through this and you say, I can nail AM1 and AM2. I'm very confident in those and I can do those quickly, right? As opposed to, like FM1 is first, but maybe that's a bit of a weak spot for me and I know it's going to kind of chew up my time. So that's an exam technique method, right? Um, I will say, it's like some people do it in reverse. They prefer to do the hard stuff first because they can keep a really good watch on the time. But I've never been very good at that. Um, personally, I always try and nail down, all right, I know these are the sections I'll be good at, or I know these are the questions I can do really quickly. And then I come back. Yeah. All right, now let's try and piece this together. Yes. Okay, so all right, well, why don't we? And uh, what I'm going to ask is since as a grade we did so poorly, maybe again, if you've not done this, pick up your pen in your book and let's try to follow this through from step one. But where does they get the 392 from? From this part of the question. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about this. I'll talk about this. So, let's start through. One year after purchasing them, Wade sells the shares for $10.70 per share. What's his total profit if he's charged brokerage as shown? So, one step at a time. This first line, what could we write over here? I, you know, this is, some questions are better done than others. What is that first line actually representing? 
Yeah, very good. Value of all shares, right? There's a thousand of them and they're worth $10.70 each. So he multiplies through and that's how he gets this number. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what is this second line? Why is there a subtraction happening? What is the number that's being subtracted? Where does it come from? Yeah, it, it comes from part one, right? Because that $10,700, part of that is money he spent right at the beginning to get the shares in the first place. So he has to subtract those. So $900, this is actually the profit. I suppose you could say like gross profit because he sold it, but he hasn't actually, the broker hasn't actually charged any fee yet. So that's why I'm calling it gross. Okay. So then it says brokerage, and then you have to look. Which transaction category? There's one, uh, two, three categories that he could fall into, right? Can you see why the arrow is on the last one? Why is it that one? Yeah, ten thousand seven hundred dollars. It only can be this last category of over ten thousand. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why he's identified that, and that's where that zero point zero one, which of course represents. What does it represent? It represents that 1% that we all had it already had up there. 1% of that total transaction, that's the $107 that appears there, right? So you really, like a lot of people didn't get that number. It's because we didn't recognize where to calculate. Like the over $10,000, what's over $10,000? So you had to get this first, and then you also had to know what to multiply by. Okay, so admittedly, it was hard to get to that mark. Question? That part there, what did you get? One out of two? Yeah. Again, I think, and I did mention this before, right? So it could have been a little bit clearer. I'll admit that, okay? Um, but, you know, it does say, it does say right in the beginning, like this is exactly the same kind of problem that we experienced in the, what is it? Alex and Kim, that question. There's a connection between the parts and it's kind of implied to use that. Uh, I will point out, if you've had a look at some HSC questions, they'll often make that more explicit, which probably you're expecting. That means that you'll be ready for it next time. Okay. Yep, yep. Correct, correct. Okay. Uh, and you can see like, oh, these are the same guy. Like that's what's happening here. Does that make sense?